Hello everyone. Good morning again. This is Sunday. A great, another great Sunday. Okay. And uh, praise the Lord because we're here, right? And because we are still strong, healthy, right? Amen. And uh, we're just, you know, uh, for those who were infected by uh, the uh, coronavirus, then we're just have to pray for them. Uh, we're sorry for them. And uh, for us, who have uh, strong bodies, and I don't know if you are immune, I would not say so. <laughs> but we don't know, you know? So we just keep on praying uh, for protection. But because of God's grace, we are here. We can praise and worship God in person. So just be thankful for what God has given us, okay? So, and uh, we just sorry for our brothers and sisters who are in a, you know, struggling right now, especially those who are the first responders. So I can't imagine doctors, nurses, and other workers, health workers, they uh, gave their life, you know, for this, uh, pandemic and uh, we just uh, you know pray for other people who are still struggling that may God uh, you know spare them too so uh, this is uh, a wonderful morning welcome again and uh, also welcome for those who are viewing us online way back to the Philippines and even to the Middle East Maybe Saudi Arabia or whatever. <laughs> and of course, pastors uh, church in Hong Kong, right? So uh, yeah, and uh, those people who have relatives back in uh, the Philippines, somewhere in Mindanao, you know, probably uh, in Davao, Kolo, Dipolo. Uh, there's a lot of places they've been watching us in Baguio, of course, Manila. Um, so welcome uh, today. We have some announcement today, and uh, for the uh, October celebrants, we have oh, Nani Catalina, happy birthday! Yes, she will sing happy birthday for congregation. She is happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Good. I ate a lot. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, and there's another one, uh, John Carlo Castillo, on the 19th. That will be tomorrow, right? Uh, then 19, on the 22nd, Maida. How? Okay, on the 22nd. And then the next will be the next announcement. For the wedding anniversary, nobody's celebrating an anniversary, wedding anniversary for October. And nobody celebrating in November. Next will be December. So we have more announcement. Maybe uh, the Rose, can you know? Hello again. It's uh, Berber already, and it's um, the October is almost uh, over, and so the, we are uh, in our shoebox operation, Christmas child shoebox again and we are going to do it again and start shopping now and so we are our national collection week will be on the third week of november so we are going to collect it on the second sunday of november okay so um one of the the wow um gifts for for boys will be toy trucks they say musical instruments wow means when they open the box they will see a toy that that um will bring them to say wow <laughs> so yeah and then for the uh girls we can give them stuffed toys and dolls for their wow gifts okay so we also give them personal and hygiene items like soap bar 
and for the school age kids, the school supplies, and other nice things, toys, and personal items that you can put in uh, the box. So the more variety, the better, okay? And of course, a note, a personal note, they're encouraging us to write a personal note to the kid, okay? So that when they open the box, they will have that personal touch and they would feel cared for and loved by us even when from a far away land. It's beautiful. So deadline of submission for us here in, uh, in person will be uh, November 8th. That would be the second Sunday. And please bring your boxes uh, together with the label already. So this time it's different because of uh, our being careful for the COVID uh, pandemic. We don't want to get uh, um, infected. So we would do our $9 donation for shipment online. So if you receive your box, it's uh, there's inside, right? There's something inside there which you can scan or you can put uh, the nine number code into the Samaritan's Purse um, website. Okay, so just check it and if you have questions, just approach me so I can tell you um, what to do. But if you can scan with your cell phone and pay through that, that would be okay too. So, deadline submission for Operation Christmas Child Shoe Box will be on the second Sunday of November, okay, for us. And we are going to pray for our children. Thank you very much. And I would like to call uh, Lizelle for the announcement for the ladies. Good morning. I am excited to announce you that we have a date. Doc Bill is available November 7. So you have two things, two dates to remember, the 7th and the 8th. And I am excited. I know you miss me. I'm kidding. We miss each other. Yes, yes. We are going to have um, devotion and also our breast cancer uh, lecture from Dr. Bill. So don't be late. We don't want a doctor waiting. Exactly, right? So I'll see you November 7th, same place, at 10 o'clock at the Green Acres Park. And of course, we always uh, observe social distancing. It's a very quite spacious place. So we have a lot of room and it's really, really good to learn how to uh, protect yourself or take care of yourself, especially the women, okay? Especially the ones all, all over there in uh, our online also. If you can come, it's okay. <laughs> You're probably from other parts of the world, but please bring your friends, your guests, okay? Because we have a pretty spacious place, like I said, okay? See you November 7th. Thank you. Another announcement for our church anniversary, the fourth church anniversary, that will be October 25, and that is next week. There will be some special numbers, and so uh, I don't know what will be the sequence yet, but of course, come over and enjoy the, 20, the fourth church anniversary, and enjoy it. Okay, uh, let's have a two minutes silent prayer. Shall we all stand, please? Let all things praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. 
Praise him and his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. And praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with a lute and harp. Praise him with a timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings, instruments, and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with pleasant cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord and praise him. Let us pray. Truly, O oh God, you're the only God that we can call truly God because you already witnessed, Lord, how you made everyone in this world, how you care for us, how you gave us another life after this. Thank you, Lord, because we have this opportunity to be called your sons. Thank you for this wonderful morning that we can praise and worship you in person, Lord. Thank you for protecting us from harm. Thank you because you spared every one of us here from the pandemic. We just continue to pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to give us protection. And even our brothers and sisters who are not with us today, O oh Lord, maybe they were just afraid. But we pray, O oh Lord, that you would give them comfort so that someday they will be with us to praise and worship you. Thank you, Lord, because you are here with us today. Thank you, in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. So, we are here today again with one goal to worship our God, right? We sing to worship our God. We all know that singing gives also benefits to our body. It helps Im uh, boost our immune system, right? And smiling makes you feel better, but also it brightens up someone else's day. You agree? Amen. So I am so sad, I can't see your smiles because you're all wearing your mask, but can we give a smile to one another and say good morning? So, see all those beautiful smiles, it just makes you guys giggle, right? And it pumps your heart rate. And now, your immune system is in its optimum. But, isn't God so wonderful? Amen. Anything that He gives us, anything that we do for Him, it still comes back to us. Why do we worship Him? It's not really for Him. It's for you and me. You worship the God of love. You will be blessed with love then you can bless others with love. Worship the God of forgiveness and you will be blessed with forgiveness and you will be able to forgive others. Worship the God of strength and you will be blessed with strength and you will be able to encourage others you will be able to make someone feel better, give someone hope, especially right now. Everyone can use hope. Everyone can use a good word, a word of encouragement. Everyone needs God. Don't be shy. Sing to Him. Let's invoke him, ask him to open up the heavens. Join us, sing the whole song, okay? Sing with us. Yeah. 
He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper and a light in the midst of this darkness in this world. You know, He is in control Amen. even when we don't see or feel it. Romans 8.28 says that in all things, God works for, those, for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Deuteronomy 31 6 says be strong and courageous not to be afraid or terrified for the Lord our God goes with us he will never leave nor forsake us amen so let us worship the Lord at this time no sing waymaker sing it with a thankful heart because our God he's here in our midst amen because there's Two or three of us gathered here. He is here. He's here in our midst. So let's sing to him with a grateful heart.
Scripture reading for this morning is found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Let's read it responsibly, please. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of this darkness of this age, against the spiritual cause of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded with your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Let's read it together. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Magandang umaga po sa kanilang lahat. Magandang umaga. Magandang umaga. Praise God, praise God. Somebody said that if you want to smile underneath your face mask, you better draw something there. Diba? Just draw a smile. Diba? Diba? Lagyan nyo rin yung ano. Put some, don't put some teeth. Might get scary. People might connect that to the Halloween. But anyway. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Are you glad that you're here? Amen. Praise God. Um, this is a bit, uh, we're trying to, you know, figure out how we would do things. Other life groups are also trying to figure out how they move, but it looks like everything is doing fine. Everything is okay. Before we started here, the former, the life group that, that came here, they said, we will try to finish at the exactly 10.30 so that you guys can come in. So praise God, you know that's the spirit of cooperation, Amen. spirit of uh, love to one another. So can you greet your neighbors? Hello. Look at your neighbors, say, hey, how are you? I'm glad.
glad that you're here. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, we have been doing a series of our studies in the book of Ephesians. And by the way, before I do that, uh, we, we, we made an announcement about the uh, our fourth year church anniversary that's going to be next week. We still don't know how it will look like because it's kind of different from how we've been doing things. Um, no food or with food, to be honest, we don't know yet. But it looks like, it looks like uh, the pending um, understanding is we don't have any food for next week. But you'll never know. Okay, we don't know. But we will talk within the week. Let's see what we can talk about. But just be here with that celebratory spirit of uh, thankfulness to the Lord that He has allowed us to uh, go this far, four years, preaching the gospel. Amen? Amen. So open your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And we shall look over verses 10 to 17 in a message that I have entitled, The Armor of God Geared for Battle. The Armor of God, God Geared for Battle. And today's message perhaps could be one of those familiar topics that any Bible teacher, Sunday school teacher, uh, preacher would have handled because uh, this is very familiar. I, the first time I heard this, it was in Sunday school. And I think the reason why it is so familiar is because, you know, you can relate to it right away. You're talking about armor. When you say armor, what's the picture that comes into your mind? War. War. And then the armor, you know, the shield. I mean, every boy would want to have those things, you know, the shield. Some, some teachers would be very creative. They would even look at the medieval picture of the knight in shining armor. You know, the helmet shine from top, from head to the legs with the shield and all the swords. All that kind of stuff, it's so graphical, it's so creative. If you are a Sunday school teacher, man, you, I think you would be excited to teach this lesson. Because there are pictures. And yet, uh, um, the metaphor that Paul used when he wrote this is actually not based on the knight in shining armor in, during the medieval times, but it's actually based on the Roman soldier. And when he mentioned in Ephesians 6.20, he is an ambassador on chains, it's possible that when he was writing it, he was getting uh, some inspiration from the picture that he's seeing from the Roman soldier. He's uh, kind of like describing, putting some spiritual messages uh, in that, in what he is seeing, okay? The Roman soldiers. But then we're talking about soldiers. I asked you a while ago, why do we like this? Why do boys like this? Okay, mga, mga uh, war games. Why, why do nations have soldiers? Why would the nation even appropriate a budget for defense? You know why? Because there is a battle. And I'm going to like to show you my first point. Because there is a battle. The first one we have to take note is we are in battle. Okay? Now, a lot of Christians would want to ride into the uh, Christian uh, boat thinking that we are in a cruise ship to enjoy the scenery, Enjoy the songs, enjoy the program, enjoy the fellowship, all those fancy things that we see in a good fellowship. There's nothing wrong with that, but hey, let me tell you, why do we have those songs? Why do you have the fellowship? Why do you have the preaching? It is to nourish the soldier in us because there is a battle. Amen? Amen. So that we would be ready for the battle the moment the enemy attacks. Okay. And you're talking about the armor of God because you have to be dressed for the occasion. So whenever you say there's a battle, you don't go to the battlefield wearing a Hawaiian costume. Okay? Um, if you just think about that, you wear the battle armor. Amen? And then the, uh, Paul, teaching about the armor of God, also talks about the demeanor of the Christian or the stance of the Christian. The Christian is ready for wrestling. He is ready for fight. Okay? He is ready to engage in that spiritual fight. And in a way, it's a statement that whenever we wear that, we, are, we have a statement from the spiritual enemy that we're not going to give you a hard or we're, gonna give, we're not going to give you an easy time. You know what I'm saying? We're not there to simply give up and lie before the enemy so that the enemy can devour us. Point number two, believers engages in spiritual wrestling. Okay. Uh, they, we, we engage in spiritual wrestling. Now the imagery Paul is picturing is based on the Grecian 
uh, sports during that time. Then part of the sports is they do wrestling. And the, what's the goal of wrestling? Any one of you have uh, had some wrestling in uh, in your sports in school? None. We we had some wrestling, but it's not in school. Usually at home with the brother and the sister. What's the purpose of the enemy? To pin you down, to make you surrender, to make you stay there. Okay, and the Christian should not easily give in to the wiles of the devil. As a matter of fact, when there's the devil, you should be able to recognize that's the enemy. But what do people do when when come when the devil comes? They welcome the devil. Hey, I miss you. How are you? But sometimes we welcome the enemy as if we're, we're welcoming a long lost friend. The Christian has three enemies. Number one is the world. Number two is the flesh. Number two is the devil. In First John chapter two verse sixteen, it says there. First John chapter two verse sixteen. Okay. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's the first enemy of the Christian, the world. The world entices the Christian to live an ineffective Christian life. We're talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These are the tools of the world to wait to make one you know, disengaged from God, leading. The world does not recognize God as Lord and Creator, but the world recognizes man as the Lord and Creator. Okay? And the world does not recognize God, sabi nga nung James chapter 4, verse 4. Okay? James chapter 4, verse 4. If your attitude towards the world is you truly love the world, there's a danger that you might not have full fellowship with the Lord. Verse 4, adulterers and adulteresses, do, do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. The worldly system. Because it, uh, the world has so many attractions, he wants you to think that this is your home, that this is your place. You have to establish yourself, spend your life to the fullest in this world, distracting us from the fact that when you are a Christian, your citizenship is not in this world. Okay, where is your citizenship? In heaven. It's in heaven. Amen? Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait. For the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, you are not of this world. But right now, you will are waiting for the Lord. For Him to claim us physically. Remember what Jesus Christ said to His disciples? Sabi niya, the disciples were sad. Because He was about to leave. But what did He tell them? Um, Don't be sad. You know, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. So that uh, when I come back, you will be with me. Because you're not from here. That's what Jesus Christ is yes. saying. Anyone who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, claim that promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back for you, for me, for us. So what do we do right here? While we're waiting for Him, we engage in a battle. Spiritual battle. The second enemy is the flesh. So if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, do you suddenly become a saint? Overnight, you don't, right? Come yeah. about. Who among you can claim, hey, the moment I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, suddenly I'm not sinning anymore? Any one of you can claim that? Wala, di ba? But we are still in the flesh. But you know that the flesh, it's in a way our cross. Anyone who is in Christ, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in there, but the flesh is still there. There's a battle going on. Let's describe about the flesh. Let's Try to know something about the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. It says there, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. There's a battle now. Okay? So that's in a way, 
you can see where the battlefield is. It's not, I mean, literally you're on the soil, but it's in your heart. Because there's two nature now battling, trying to win over you. What are the descriptions of the works of the flesh? 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, self, um, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, verse 21, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, he's not telling that if you fall into doing some of these things, you would be disregarded. That's not what the scripture is saying. But the Pope Paul is saying, if you are to be a child of God, if you really are a son of God, check your behaviors. Don't be doing things that are descriptive of those who are going to hell. Okay. Um, check how you check your life. But then in the same book, it mentions about the fruit of the Spirit, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. Amen, Muba? So if you have the Lord Jesus Christ in you, the Holy Spirit, you are still with the Holy Spirit, there's a fruit Alam niyo po ba yung fruit? The seed that is uh, true, you plant it in the soil, eventually it would spring up. Diba? Who among you have, uh, are, are, you have gardens at your backyard? I mean, we love uh, invading your gardens <laughs> because of the many fruits. What do we, what do we, uh, we, we do, you don't force the trees to give up, to give fruits, right? It comes out naturally. Why? Because the seed is alive. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So that if you submit to the Holy Spirit, the flesh will not succeed. Now the third enemy is the devil. He will try to influence you. He will try to tempt you. He will try to discourage you, make you doubt. He will lie to you, make you fear. The devil doesn't want you to look at the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't want you to grow in faith. He wants you to look away from Jesus Christ and make you weak. What kind of an enemy is the devil? Subtle. Subtle. Okay. He is also wise. Why is devil? Maruno magisip. He is the kind of enemy that you cannot just engage him using your own self. You need to have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And if you are a child of God, the devil has you in his crosshair. You are his target. He will spend more time on the strong Christian and less time on the weak Christians because, you know, it's a waste of time. They are already his in a sense. Diba? And the, he will not spend more time on the, on the worldly people. But he will spend time on the strong Christians. Why? Because the strong Christians brings people to the Lord. Amen, Puma. Amen. Strong Christians make other people trust the Lord. And then they, they enlighten the minds of other Christians. The devil doesn't want that. That's why he is your number one enemy if you are a strong Christian. Now another thing that a strong, strong Christian does, he foils the plan of the devil. Sometimes people have some feelings, they thought it is right, until they encounter a, a strong Christian who tells them, brother, sister, uh, that's a wrong thing to say or that's a wrong thing to do you know that's the work of a strong Christian it foils the plan of the devil amen that's why the enemy hates a strong Christian he would spend time putting you down but let me tell you something about the enemy point number three the enemy is not flesh and blood but against principalities and the rulers of darkness that's the enemy the enemy is not flesh and blood but against principalities and the rulers of darkness the enemy is not the bad person who cut you off 
in Highway 99. He is not the, the enemy is not the person who insults you the moment you pray for him or uh, admonish or correct the person. He is not the enemy. She is not the enemy. The enemy is not your relative or your close friend who tries to insult you whenever you share about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is not your enemy. The enemy is not the government who stops us from worshiping. That's not the enemy. The enemy is within. It's, we are fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So you might even liken the enemy as something like a virus that goes into your system and it affects your work, your testimony, your resolve to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and he wants you to follow the devil instead. Okay? The, the enemy makes, you know, it makes, he makes you lazy or he makes you busy. Too busy to have time for the Lord. That's the enemy. He wears you down, offers the enjoyment of the world instead of you coming to God for comfort and for peace. And he discourages you, makes you fearful, and at times he makes you angry at God. To the point that sometimes you would realize, Lord, why did this happen? Why does he have to die? Why does she have to die? Why did you take this? Why did you take that? That's the enemy trying to fuel that. See, is that your God? He does that to you after all you have done for him. That's the work of the dead enemy. One thing about the spiritual, you know, it affects that which is physical. Okay. The spiritual situation of the person affects the physical. Eventually, when you trace back why you are angry, why you are bitter, why you are, why you are fearful, why are you sad, why are you disappointed, or why do you have lots of doubts, or you feel apathetic or indifference, those are the emotional things that you feel and people might see that, can see that. Why do you have lots of prejudice, or malice, or pride, or grit? You trace that back to something that is spiritual. That's how powerful, powerful spiritual life is. That is why you need to wear the armor of God. That's why we need to wear the armor. But we talked about all those enemies and all those things. We also have to remember one thing. Are you ready for point number four? The battle is already won. Amen. 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 It's already won. We do not fight to win. Because it's already won by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So why is the devil putting you down? A true believer has already, uh, is already victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he has already been led from death to life. Let's see some passages for that. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 50, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then let's, let's look at another verse. Romans 8, 37. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us, we are more than conquerors. So why is the devil trying or the enemy trying to put you down? Because the enemy just wants you to be ineffective. That's it. He doesn't want you to grow. He wants to remain stunted, weak in your faith. And the reason why Paul mentioned the armor of God because it's ongoing even up to now. So while we are here on earth waiting for the great salvation that Jesus Christ, when, when he comes, either through rapture or either one of us dies and the Lord would meet us, while we are waiting for that day that we can face him uh, uh, face to face, we have to wear that armor. The Lord Jesus Christ has given the church a mission to go to all the world, make disciples, teaching them to observe all things that he has Commanded, but the enemy wants to weaken the church so that the church will not be able to do that. But what is the admonition of God as he allowed Paul to write the book of Ephesians? He said in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 11. 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 11, he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. It says there, be strong, not simply be strong in yourself. A lot of people would brag about, hey, I am strong in my faith. But actually, it's not about the strength of your faith. Don't brag about your faith. Brag about the strength of the Lord's hand. Amen. Amen. The reason why we are staying strong in the Lord is not because we are, hey, because I'm faithful. No, because He is faithful. Amen? Amen. Be strong in the Lord. And the armor of God is meant to be wielded not by human powers, but by the power in, in the Holy Spirit. And when you wear the armor, do you only wear the helmet? No. Will you only wear the boots? No. ba? Or just the shield? I don't need all the other stuff. Just the shield. It's enough. The Bible says, who wear the whole. Amen. Not the partial armor of God. The whole armor of God. Because of the nature of the battle. The nature of the battle is both offensive and defensive. Okay? And, and you cannot go to the battle with a defensive stance only, standing there just trying to absorb at one way or the other, you would make some offensive move, right? Tama po ba? And, and in the battlefield, we can just imagine this. None of us may have had ex uh, experience of that. Ewan, ewan ko na lang po sa mga soldiers, if I have some armies here or uh, uh, soldiers here. But I could just imagine, based on what I see in the movies, Battlefield, you can go, you, you move forward, you move backward, the enemy comes from either way, you move on different directions, backward, forward, up and down, you roll, you stand up, okay? And to do that, you need to be in the full battle, battle gear, amen? amen? Point number four, you have to know your weapons, amen? You have to know your weapons. It's like I could just imagine if you're a hunter and you see a bear charging you and you have a rifle, you don't go and wait for the bear, okay, I'm gonna smash your head with my rifle. You don't do that, right? But you arm your rifle, put it, load it with the gun, and then just wait for the right timing if you know how to use the rifle. Same thing with us Christians. We have to know the uh, our 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 weapons, verse 13. Okay, Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Can you see that phrase there? Withstand in the evil day. There is such a thing as an evil day. It is the day that temptation can actually overcome you, overpower you. It is uh, meant to overwhelm you, put you down, and it can render you helpless and hopeless and powerless. That's the evil day. And our evil day has different schedules to each of us. Okay? It might be a good day for me, but it might be an evil day for, for others. And that evil day is meant to put you down. But remember this. The armor that God gives us is designed for that evil day. Amen. Amen. It's designed for that. It is meant so that you can stand and withstand. So, and if you fall, it is meant for you to be able to stand up again when you fall. So the battle gear is meant to be worn standing up, not lying down. Although some people would like to wear the armor and lie down and take a selfie picture. But you know, our armor is not for picture taking only. It's meant to be used for battle. What am I saying this? A lot of people might know the Bible so well. Memorize the Bible, know a lot of teachings, and make a display, hey, this is what I know. But the real battle is, how would you use those verses when the problem comes? How will you apply it in your life? A lot of people would just use the, the armor for, you know, picture taking, selfie, selfie. Ako din nagsis selfie pa minsan, minsan. But it's meant to make you strong. It's meant to be applied. Ephesians 6, 14 says there, Stand, therefore, these are now the weapons. 
Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. It mentions two armors. The first one is the belt of truth. First gear is the belt of truth worn around the waist. Okay, regardless of whatever our waist line is. But it is made to hold things together. Okay, this is where you put your sword. And all the other stuff the soldier needs, it's meant to hold things together. And it says there, give yourself with the waist with truth. It's a belt of truth. Truth should hold the Christian together. Amen? Truth is an integral force in the life of a victorious Christian. Because a Christian cannot live in a lie. Tama ba? We cannot live in a lie. Because if there's only so much of a lie that comes into our life, it would uh, deactivate our system in a sense. Christian, when he allows lies to, be in, to invade his system, he will fall apart. Kaya kailangan po natin ng belt of truth. The next weapon, armor that is mentioned here, then he talks about the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplates are metal uh, pieces or chains. It covers the head or the neck to the waist, front and back. So it symbolizes the believer's righteousness in Christ. It also symbolizes the believer's righteous life in Christ. Diba? Kumbaga, parang it protects the heart. So whatever the darts that comes in, your righteousness should be able to make you stand in the Lord. The devil might say, look at Anak, he committed a sin again, but you know when you have the breastplate of righteousness, uh, you can always say, Lord, it's not because of my good works that you saved me. It's because of your good work. You know, breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. And having shod your feet, feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So there's shod of feet like a sandals. The shoes of the Roman soldiers, uh, the, the shoes, they have hobnails, okay, spikes. So, so that when they stand, it gives him a better footing for the battle. Because with all the pushings, the bumping from left to right, front and back, the hobnails on the sandals would support him and make him more determined in his stand. Have you ever tried to step on a slippery mud with a very shiny shoes? It's so frustrating, right? Somebody pushes you, you push with all your might and then you get pushed back. I remember when I was still playing soccer back in my uh, uh, school in Don Bosco, the shoes that we wear have spikes, but it's very expensive. So some of us, uh, if we cannot borrow shoes, we will have to use our own rubber shoes. And it's not meant for that kind of uh, surface. And it's so frustrating because you cannot stand, you get pushed. Even if you put all your strength, you will be uh, sliding away. But the Roman uh, soldiers wear, it's, it, is made, it is made for the soldier to stand and withstand. Because that is how life is. Life is full of pushings here and there. We have to be able to gear our spiritual feet with the proper sandals so that we will not slip and we will not slide and be pushed back easily. Okay? I mean, nobody imagined that there would be a coronavirus. All of us would, even back in 2019, we look at 2020 as a very good thing. It looks good in the calendar. Wow, 2020, 2020 vision. And a lot of stories would have revolved around that number, 2020, and then what happens? It will all go down to history as 2020 as the year the whole of ho the whole world stayed inside their home. That's 2020. It affected our emotions. It affected our worship. It affected our fellowship. It affected your jobs, your security, your plans. A lot of jobs whose uh, earning is based on people coming in got affected because of this. But if you are shod with the sandals, you would not easily be slipped off. You would not you easily go down, but you will stand and withstand. Amen, Amen. Amen. 
So my, my wife says, if they are quiet, it's because they are processing it. Yeah. Amen. You're processing the message. Praise God. <laughs> One thing also about the sandals, the soldiers' uh, sandals, it talks about the direction of the Christian. The direction of the Christian is moving forward. Amen. We go to places, to different places. But why do we go to different places? What do we bring? We bring the gospel of salvation. Amen. Because basically that's the, the work of a Christian. The most victorious Christian is a witnessing Christian. Amen. Check yourself. How many souls have I led to the Lord? Okay. I'm not going to ask you a number. But if you have uh, led someone to the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. That's the activity, that's the regular activity of a Christian. Bringing someone to the Lord. Not just simply bringing him to the church, you know, or to the fellowship, although that's not bad. But if you lead someone to the Lord Jesus Christ, eventually that someone, if he truly have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, he would want to go to the church. He would want to attend the Bible study. He would want to pray. Because it's genuine. Amen? Tama po ba? One commentator also said about the sandals, it protects the ankles and the joints. Because during battle, if the ankle got uh, uh, hurt, you remember the story, you know, the Achilles heel? That was the weak point. If that part gets hurt, it's so hard to move forward. Now, a lot of us might have been hurt in our testimony, in our heart. But you know, uh, just pray to the Lord, pray for healing. But if that's affected, a lot of us are not able to move forward maybe because of a bad testimony, okay, a bad feeling, a bad event. But don't let that um, stop you. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The Roman soldier has a shield that's measured around like 4 feet by 2 feet. And it is made of wood covered with leather. It protects the soldier from spears, from arrows, from fiery darts. And the edges of this shield are so constructed that an entire soldier wearing shield can go um, interlock themselves with the shield and make something like a wall and push the enemy back. We have seen that work uh, in, in, in the news right now. The police, with uh, as they push back the rioters, that's how it is um, done or how it is uh, uh, pictured. So the shield somehow pictures that in this battle kind of imply that we are not alone. Amen. We have each other. Don't go to the battle alone. I mean, of course, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's also the important or the purpose of the fellowship. We encourage one another and we get encouragement from one another. That's the purpose of the shield. Amen. And the faith that was mentioned here, the shield of faith, is not necessarily in, uh, in reference to the saving faith, but it is in reference to the daily faith, the living faith. It is the faith that is in practice. You do it because you already have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your faith. Okay? That's the one being referenced here. And it is the one that protects you from the daily darts of the devil, which comes from any direction. Okay? It's unpredictable. Then there's the mention of the fiery darts. It's not simply just a dart meant to inflict and open, make an open wound. It is meant to burn you, fiery dart. Usually it is um, targeted to ships during that time made of wood. Or it's targeted on uh, houses or tents and even a soldier. The purpose of which is the moment the arrow lands on you, on land on the structure, it is meant to be burned. Burned alive. And when Satan shoots you, he aims for the mind, he aims for the heart. And his dart is not simply pointed, it's fiery. So that when it hits your heart straight on and you don't have that shield, you know, you can be burned with all the lies of the devil, with all the blasphemies, the hateful thoughts, the doubts, the burning desires. So, what's the purpose of the shield? It has to quench it. Diba? Kaya nga, sometimes the shield, I mean, as I, I, I read, the shield is um, shiny, smooth, so that it can deflect 
the darts. Amen? Amen. So don't go out without it. Amen. Don't go out in the world without your shield of faith. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 it reads here, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Satan attacks the mind. The same way that he has attacked Eve, he kind of confused Eve and made, him, made her believe something. The helmet refers to the mind that is controlled by God. So a lot of Christians would think, a lot of people might think, sometimes Christians do, that the intelligence, intelligence is not important in the Christian growth. But actually it plays a very vital role in the Christian growth, in the Christian service, and in the Christian victory. So when you pray, Lord, I give you my heart. Include there, Lord, I also give you my mind. Kasi kasama yun eh. Uh, a lot of people might think Christianity is pure emotions. Hey, I worship you as long as I feel good in the Lord. Praise God. I mean, that's, that's good. That's fine. But the mind is also included. As a matter of fact, if you think about the way we do ministry right now, it involves a lot of the mind as well. You know, setting things all this up. It involves planning. Okay? It involves meeting. Okay? It involves physical and mental sacrifice. If you think about that, uh, sometimes you have to discipline your feelings. Because you have to know what is right. Diba? The mind is included. Now the Christian, now in this verse it talks about the Christian who studies the Bible and learns the meaning of the Bible and the Bible doctrines and uh, thinks of how it applies in his life. If that is that Christian who studies the Word of God, dedicates himself to applying the Word of God in his life, then he will not be and she will not be easily led astray by the enemy. By the enemy. Okay? The helmet is meant to protect the Christian from the lies of the devil. So, brothers and sisters, it is not enough that on a day you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You have to study the Word of God. Amen? Amen? That's why Bible studies are important. But most of all, your personal study of the Word of God is very important. Okay? It's good to listen to good sermons, but um, it's also good, as a matter of fact, you should have a daily uh, dosage of God's Word in your life. Okay. How many times do you eat in a day? <laughs> Three or more. <laughs> diba? And in a week, how many days do you eat in a week? Every day. Same thing with our spiritual life. A lot of Christians would only eat once a week. Diba? Uh, we have to eat the Word of God daily. Amen? Amen. This is like a feast. So, it's when we gather together. This is a feast. But on your own personal life, you have to read God's Word. Amen? Amen po ba? Amen. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, a uh, portion of it, it says there, 13, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it reads, For Christ... Okay, tama ba yung aking verse? 2 Peter, sorry. It says here, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, But grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So when you lead someone to the Lord Jesus Christ, don't just simply lead the person to fellowship, but also lead him to the study of the Word of God. Okay? Amen? And then there's a mention of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is now the offensive weapon of God that He provided for us. Now, an interesting thing about the sword of the Roman soldier, it's not that long. It's the... It's, uh, um, longer than a dagger, but not long enough for what we see in the medieval, you know, the sword. If I would decide, personally, if I would decide a sword for me, I would like it to be very long. Okay. If I'm thinking of me being the practical guy, if you have uh, seen some samurai movies or the ninja movies, their swords are long, especially the samurai, because it is meant to hurt the enemy before it can hurt me. If I'm going to be thinking practical, I would design my sword that way. But the Roman soldier's sword is short. It's very short. Not short as the, the one that's a kitchen knife, but uh, big enough to be a dagger. And it is used for close 
combat battle, close battle, which to me, when I try to think of, me, of it, suggests the um, intentionality that is engaged in the battle as far as the Word of God is concerned. You know, sharing the Word of God, that's a very close engagement. You know what? Very close engagement. It suggests that we should be intentional. It suggests that you have to be resolved and participate personally in sharing the Word of God. You are involved. Now, in our time today, the copy-paste method, the share method, it's so easy. It's so tempting for us to disengage ourselves in the message. So before you share something, before you even give a track to something, pray for it. Amen? Because it's the message of God that's also your message. Okay? Um, it, it's, it's your time. You have to engage on it. Sometimes it becomes an excuse for us to, because we don't, perhaps we don't want to engage people. Okay, that's the easiest way. Come on, just read it by yourself. But you know, that's also your message. To the fact that if you are about to give trust, sometimes the, the gospel track is a very practical thing because the person sometimes doesn't have the time. But if you have the time, amen, if you have the time to sit down and explain the gospel, do that. Amen. And then sometimes what I do is I explain the gospel and then after that, hey, I'd like to give you this as a follow-up of what I have shared. Because that is also your message. The sword of the Spirit. Okay? The Word of God. And, and um, the difference between the sword, the physical sword, the physical sword is um, uh, it kills. Okay? It kills a person. But the Word of God, it convicts and it revives the soul. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Okay. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's how sharp God's word is. When you hear it, okay, when you hear it, it makes you check your feelings, your intentions, your purpose. You can hide your intentions in the eyes of people, but not in the Word of God. Amen? So the Word of God is like that surgical knife that cuts and brings out the true Word. But when you use the Word of God against Satan, it renders him uh, uh, helpless. It cripples him from hindering the work of God. Now look at in Matthew chapter 4. Remember Jesus Christ was led by the spirit to be tempted in the wilderness and all the blows and the temptations of the devil was uh, going to the Lord Jesus Christ what did he use the word, of god. the word of god but then interestingly what did the satan also use he's also using the word of god that's the devil what's the difference because the devil only quotes the bible but he never obeys it Jesus Christ quotes the Bible and obeys and submits to the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, how do you use the Bible? How do we use the God's Word? Maybe we're just quoting it. If we're just quoting it and not obeying and not submitting to it, then we're just following the pattern of the devil. So when you use the Word of God, use it as just how Jesus Christ used it. Because this is our weapon as we engage the spiritual battle in this world. Amen? Bow down, let's bow down your head, close your eyes. Bow down your head, close your eyes. I'd like to give some invitation today. If you are listening to this message, and if I ask you, if you die today, are you sure if you're going to heaven? And assuming your answer, yes, I'm, I know, I'm sure I'm going to heaven. And if I ask you, what's your reason why you are sure? And if you say, well, because I'm good. Well, I'm not, I, I, I don't want to brag. I don't want to be, I, I don't want to sound arrogant. But in my own best way, I try not to hurt anyone. I go to church. I pray. I try to love God the best as I can. 
and, and I try to be peaceful with my neighbors. So I think the Lord would somehow give me good points and make me enter heaven. You know, if that's your reason, brother and sister, then I don't think you quite understand the message of the Bible. It looks like you're working too hard to secure a ticket in heaven. You know, going to heaven is not about you securing a ticket by doing all the good points so that God could give you a thumbs mark. Going to heaven is such a high price. The payment for it is death. And if you die for your own sin, you know that what that means. It means you're gonna have to die that, uh, pay for that forever in separated from God. So God gave us the payment through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to pay for our sin, my sin, your sin. And the payment is there. The payment of sin is dead. So what do you have to do now? Why? What you should you should be doing? What should I be doing? You should come to God. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ and tell Him, Lord, I cannot save myself. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. I will not. I will stop trusting on my good efforts, but I will start trusting in You. I cannot save myself, I give up, but I know you can save me. So today, if you would like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, as your heads are bowed, eyes are closed, I'd like you to follow me in your heart. Tell this, tell it to Him. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I cannot save myself. Please save me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died on the cross and after three days you rose again. Thank you, Lord. I claim victory in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. While your heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you truly have sincerely uh, uh, repented of your sin and have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you know the Lord Jesus Christ has a promise to those who have accepted Him. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you, and if I come back, you can come with me. You will come with me and live with my Father forever. That's the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ to anyone who has accepted Him as His personal Lord and Savior. And if you have accepted Him today, then tell us, we would like to rejoice with you. But my second invitation is this. If you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ already as your personal Lord and Savior, and you have not been baptized yet, we would like to give this opportunity as an invitation. Tell us. We will explain to you that baptism will not save you, but it is an indication that you are not ashamed to be identified as a Christian. Talk to us. We will schedule our, your baptism. It's uh, the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now in my last invitation, in today's message, if you want to say something to the Lord, like you're talking about the armor of God, but if you're thinking, I have been losing all my battles lately. I know I should be growing in the Lord, but I have been losing my battle. And I want to come to Him I want to surrender my life to Him again. Brothers and sisters, anything you want to say to the Lord, or I have something to thank the Lord for. He has given me this wonderful encouragement within the week, within the month. I just would like to praise Him, like to thank Him, or maybe you want to pray for a brother or a sister. Oh, I have this brother, I have been burdened by him, I have been burdened by her. He has this problem, she has this problem. I'd like to pray for him. If you have that in your heart, I'm not going to ask you to come forward anymore. I just want you to stay in your seat. But if you have something to say to, say to the Lord, I just want you to raise your hand wherever you are. And in your raising of your hand, you are talking to God and claiming, Lord, I need prayers. I need to thank you. I need to pray for someone. If you want to just say something to the Lord, just raise your hand wherever you are while... Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Just raise your hand.
forevermore. Just respond to the Lord. Thank you. See that. Remain it. Uh, let let your hand remain raised. Just raise your hand if you want to praise the Lord, or you have this personal prayer request to the Lord. Just raise your hand. Wherever you are, you don't need to come forward. Just stay where you are. The Lord can see your hand. Thank you. Just raise your hand. Praise God. I'd like to request everyone to please stand up. And we will end in our closing prayer. And after the prayer, the praise team would lead us in our closing song. Let us pray. Great mighty God, we thank you for your message. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Even now, you have given us the chance to be gathered again in this place. We pray for continuous protection as we have our fellowship today and as we go out, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, that the message stay not only in our mind, but stay in our heart. Let it grow. And Lord, I pray for this week that if there will be a chance that we can share this to anyone, Lord God, or to talk about you in, uh, to someone, Lord God, to share the gospel to someone or lead someone to you, Lord God, in a saving prayer. I pray that we be able to do that. Thank you, Lord God. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God and to our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. To Him be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Now, uh, just a uh, brief thing. Uh, we have our uh, baskets there at the back. For our uh, tithes and givings, just there at the back. Babalitaan ko na lang kayo with regards to our anniversary but please be here next week amen that was quite a powerful message and uh, the greatest thing that god has done for us is giving his son jesus christ in john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life but he did not stop there. So as we move on to our respective places, as we leave this fellowship hall today, may we always remember the, great, the greatest thing that God has done for us and the great things that he continues to give and do in our lives every day despite of whatever we are tackling. Remember, God is in control. He is doing great things. So join me as we sing our um, last song today in type of great things. Let us worship our King with our whole heart.
the Filipino ministry or are a regular attender and you're thinking how you can give, we would like to suggest the following ways how you can give to our ministry. Number one, using a computer, go to valleybaptist.org by typing valleybaptist.org, which will bring you to the church website. From there, click on the word give, which will bring you to the page that says invest on eternity. Below that, click the give now button. And the next page is where one can indicate the amount one desires to give. Be sure to check if you're planning to give one time only or if it's a recurring gift. Specify also the type of giving. If you plan to give to the Filipino ministry, please click the option that says Ministry Operations. And from there, choose the option Other. Then in the memo portion, type Filipino ministry. Then click the next button. After clicking next, you will be asked to supply your cell phone number. Have your cell phone ready before pressing the send code button. Then you will receive a code via text. Supply this code back to the website. Then follow the next instructions to complete your giving. Number two, using your cell phone, you can also do the same thing by downloading the Valley Baptist app from the App Store or from Google Play. And from there, you can click the Give button and follow the same procedure as discussed. Number three, also via your cell phone, you can type the word Valley to the number 77977 to give via text. Just be sure to mind the instructions so you can specify that you are giving to the Filipino ministry. And number four, another way to give to the ministry is by simply mailing your check. Praise God, the delivery man is still very much active picking up mails, especially if you're not able to go to the post office. And lastly, if you live near Valley Baptist, which is located at 4800 Fruitvale Avenue, you can also drop your check or cash at the drop box located just outside the admin office. The admin office is located in front of the fellowship hall where the Filipino ministry meets. If you are giving cash, be sure to indicate in your envelope Valley Baptist Church Filipino Ministry. And don't forget to put your name and your address so that it will be recorded. Again, thank you very much for your wonderful heart of giving. May God continuously bless you.